In this video, I'm going to answer the question, what is a Bond? Bond is a British secret agent who went by the codename 007. Bond was known for his daring missions, his use of top-of-the-line cars, gadgets, and spy equipment, as well as for his ability to seduce beautiful women, otherwise known as Bond girls. Wait, that's not the kind of Bond we're talking about. Okay, sorry, I must have misunderstood. Well, in that case, let's just start over. In this video, I'm gonna answer the question, what is a bond? The financial kind, you know, like the thing that you invest in. I'm gonna be talking about what a bond is, how to choose bonds to invest in, and finally, I'll go over some specific ways you can invest in bonds for your own portfolio. There'll be zero jargon or financial gibberish in this video, so it's a perfect explanation for anyone who's totally new to the whole money and investing world. So if that sounds good to you, give this video a thumbs up and let's dive right in. First off, what is a bond? A bond is a loan that you give to someone in exchange for interest. And at the end of the loan, you usually get your principal back. All of us are already familiar with bonds because if you've ever lent money to a family member or you've spotted a friend who you know forgot to bring her wallet to dinner, then you have invested in a bond. The only difference is that instead of earning interest, it was just an informal understanding between friends and family. So a bond is simply a loan that you give to someone, usually for interest. In the financial world, bonds are actually a legal contract between the lender and the borrower. In many cases, if the borrower doesn't pay you back, you're legally allowed to seize their assets and sell them off so that you can get your money back. That is why bonds are considered to be generally safer investments than stocks. Because unlike with bonds, when you buy a stock, you're actually not legally entitled to anything. Stock investors will only make money if the company makes money. And if there's no profit in the company, then stock investors don't get anything. If the company goes out of business, stock owners don't have any legal recourse, which means if a company goes bankrupt, while the bondholders may be able to get some of their money back by selling off the company's assets, stockholders generally are left losing their entire investment. Of course, on the other hand, if the company is successful, stock investors get all of the upside. So even if the company goes to the moon and becomes enormously successful, stockholders get fabulously rich. While on the other hand, the bond investors will simply just get their interest and their principal payments. Nothing more, nothing less. That's why if you really want your money to grow, you wanna invest your money primarily in stocks and not in bonds. For example, Apple. Apple is a company that issues both stocks and bonds. So if you like Apple as a company, you have a choice of either buying Apple stock or buying Apple bonds. If you buy Apple stock, you will become a part owner in Apple, meaning you will take part in all of the dividends, all of the upside that Apple will generate as a company. However, if you invest in Apple bonds, you become a lender to Apple. And as of today, Apple corporate bonds don't yield that much, not even 2%. So that's pretty much it. It's safe to assume that it'll be much more lucrative to invest in a company's stock than in its bonds. But of course, they come with their pros and cons, upsides and downsides. Now let's talk about how to choose what bonds to invest in. When you are looking at bonds to invest in for your own portfolio, you mainly want to care about two things, credit worthiness, and yield. The number one factor to consider when you're investing in bonds is credit worthiness. As long as the borrower is in good financial shape, if they're credit worthy, then you're legally guaranteed the interest payments as well as the return of your principal. However, if the borrower goes bankrupt, you may or may not get your money back and it's more iffy then and you're out of luck, which is why as a bond investor, you always want to do your research on the borrower and make sure you only invest in bonds that are credit worthy. So now you're probably wondering, how do you measure credit worthiness? Well, there's actually a standard way to do that. And that is by looking at what they call credit ratings. Credit ratings are scores that are calculated and published by independent third party agencies that help you determine how trustworthy a borrower is. Examples of some well-known ratings agencies are Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fitch. At Standard & Poor's, AAA is the highest rating for a bond. So AAA bonds are considered to be very credit worthy, very safe investments with almost zero chance of default. Then on the lower end of the scale, C ratings is the lowest rating for a bond. And C bonds are usually already in default and you basically almost have no chance of getting your principal back. And as for everything in the middle, anything that is triple B and up 
is considered investment grade, and anything that is below triple B is considered junk bond. So as an investor in bonds, you always want to look for investment grade bonds whenever possible. Something else to consider when looking at bonds is the yield. The yield is a percentage that tells you how much money you're making on a given dollar amount of money invested. For example, a 5% yield on a $100 bond investment you can expect to make $5 back every year. And so in general, the higher the yield, the better, right? You want, everyone wants more bang for the buck. I'd rather get a 20% yield on a $100 investment than a 5% yield. However, higher yields also come with higher risks. Sure, a 20% yield is way better than a 5% yield, but any bond that's offering a 20% yield needs to be looked at with a lot of suspicion. Yields like that means it's very likely that the borrower has a really bad credit rating, so it's not credit worthy. So in order to attract lenders, they have to offer extremely high yields to compensate. When it comes to bonds like these, you might get your 20% yield for a while, but there's a good chance the borrower is gonna go completely bankrupt and you won't get your principal back. For example, right now, Argentina's government bond is estimated at a 44% yield versus US treasuries, which are paying not even 1% right now. And that shows you the importance of creditworthiness because Argentina has defaulted eight times on its debt, at least eight times, could have been more. Whereas the US has never defaulted on its debt. And as you can see, according to Standard & Poor's, Argentina's credit rating is a D, which is as low as you can possibly get. So even though the yield on Argentina bonds is very attractive, 44%, it comes with the risk of not getting your principal back. So bottom line is yield and creditworthiness usually have an inverse relationship. Higher the yield, the lower the creditworthiness and vice versa. If it sounds too good to be true, it's likely that it is too good to be true. There's always a trade-off because the further you go down the ratings table, the closer you get to junk bond rating, then the more careful you need to be. You want bonds that offer a high yield, but you also want to balance that with the desire to invest your money in somewhere safe. If by this point you've decided that you want to invest in bonds for your portfolio, there are two ways you can do it. You can either invest in bonds by buying a bond fund, or you can buy individual bonds. I'll explain the difference in a minute, but either way, you're going to need to have some sort of investment account or a brokerage account in order to buy bonds, whether it's via a fund or individual bonds. And the best places to do this is at some sort of brokerage such as Fidelity, Schwab, or Vanguard. So a bond fund is when a bunch of different bonds are packaged into one convenient place. Bond funds often contain hundreds, if not thousands of different bonds, and it's all in one convenient purchase. The good thing about bond funds is the diversification, because with a bond fund, your credit risk or your risk is spread out among all the different borrowers so that you're not exposed to the credit worthiness of just one borrower. As an example, take LQD. LQD is a bond ETF that contains over 2000 different bond holdings. So it's a very diversified bond fund that spreads its credit risk among many different borrowers. If one of those 2000 bonds goes into default, it's not gonna really affect the value of that bond fund or your investment in that bond fund that much. It's a way to seek safety in numbers. Not only this, but bond ETFs or bond funds make it very convenient for you to invest in bonds compared to buying individual bonds. Because often if you wanna buy individual bonds, you have to be able to meet the investment minimums, which usually start at $1,000, and you have to be prepared to pay some fees and commissions. So unless you're an advanced investor that knows how to pick individual bonds and you've got a lot of money to invest, then it really makes more sense for you to stick with investing in bond funds versus picking out individual bonds. Now, when you research different bond funds or even individual bonds, you'll notice that bonds usually fit into two main categories, government bonds and corporate bonds. Government bonds are bonds issued by governments at the federal, state, or city level. One really well-known example is US treasuries, which are government bonds issued by the US federal government. And IEF is a bond ETF that invests in US treasuries. LQD, which is the one that I mentioned earlier, is a bond ETF that contains corporate bonds. Now, when you buy corporate bonds, you're lending money to a corporation versus a government. And since corporations are typically more vulnerable to bankruptcy than governments are, 
the yield on corporate bonds is usually going to be higher than the yield on government bonds. For example, IEF, the U.S. government bond fund, is currently yielding around 0.59%. Compare this to LQD, the corporate bond ETF, which is currently yielding a lot more at 2.25%. So as you can see, corporate bonds, higher yields, government bonds, lower yields. However, there's, as we explained before, there's always a trade-off between credit worthiness and yield. If you're wondering what type of bonds is better for your portfolio, I would really stick with government bonds so you don't get all that extra risk that you don't necessarily understand. So that's it for this beginner explanation of Bonds 101. We covered a lot in a short time, so I want to do a recap. A bond is a loan that you give in exchange for interest, and it's a legal contract between lender and borrower. Bonds are considered safer than stocks because as long as the borrower doesn't go bankrupt, you are pretty much guaranteed legally to at least get your interest and your principal. We also talked about the importance of looking at a bond's credit worthiness. Credit worthiness can be measured by looking at credit ratings, such as by Moody's, S&P, and Fitch, and with AAA being the safest and C being the riskiest. We also talked about how bond yield has to be balanced carefully with credit worthiness because the riskiest, least credit worthy bonds tend to also pay the highest yields. And finally, you learn that there's two ways to invest in bonds, either via a bond fund or buying individual bonds. But if you're a beginner, bond funds are the better way to go because of their diversification, cost efficiency, and convenience. So all in all, bonds play a really important part in every investor's portfolio. So I hope this information serves you well for years and years to come. I post more beginner friendly videos about money and investing every single Wednesday. So be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye.